Good evening, Jaguar fans. Welcome to the second coaches show of the 2022-2023 basketball season. I'm Petey Doris, and we got Coach Creasy here of the Johnson Community College Jaguars. Welcome back, Coach Creasy. Appreciate you having me. Appreciate you having me. Thanks a lot. Yeah, Coach, uh, last show we did right before the break, and now the holidays are done, the New Year's here, a lot of basketball left. But let's touch base with how the Jaguars ended the season with two games after the last coaches show, the game against Wake Tech and against Southwest Virginia, moving forward into the new year. Taking taking a look back at the Wake Tech game, uh, obviously it was a rough game on the road. Yeah. Right before the holidays, you got a lot of those issues with kids. A lot of kids already check out. <laughs> Their minds with their family, their not minds not on the basketball game. Uh, started off pretty normal how the season typically starts off for you guys. And then as the minutes ticked, their score rose and ours stayed the same. Yeah, we got very stagnant on uh, that game. Um, you know, credit to Wake Tech for, you know, really, really challenging us and putting us in a position where we didn't respond well. Um Try to, you know, if I can go back and think back that far. Uh, yeah, we just was real stagnant and did, did not play with the energy that we need and the intensity we need, um, and it showed. They um, were able to extend on the lead um, early in the second half, and we were stuck in a mode of trying to catch up, and things just continued to spiral, and we just we got out of hand. I mean, I think they got up at least maybe one time around 20 points, and we chipped away at it a little bit, but we dug too big of a hole. We dug too big of a hole, and I don't know if it's, you know, guys – looking forward to the break, or I, I, I would dare to say that's what it was. We just didn't play well, didn't perform as expected. Um, you know, guys just having to continue to trying to figure out roles and understanding how to play together and mesh and define roles and, and everybody playing their part and being accountable for their responsibilities on the court. So um, that, that kind of came to a head at Wake Tech, and then we had to obviously with the short turnaround, and I think the next day we traveled, or two days later we traveled to Southwest, um, and they're they're a talented team, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and a little bit kind of jumped on us a little bit early. We got into foul trouble, if I remember correctly. Um, and we were there, we 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 were there. It was close. Um, it was probably more of a. I think the final score. I think they won by eleven, but it was more of a six seven point game for the most part. Obviously, at the end, trying to you know extend the game. Um, they made their free throws, things of that nature. They had a couple guys that really stepped up and played well that had been, you know, playing okay, but they really stepped up and, and showed showed their talent level and showed their commitment, and, and they played well for them. Um, I, I forget the name, but their point guard in specific, um, he had a really good game, shot the ball well, controlled things against us. And they have a, they have a big guy, a forward, that was um, pretty impressive. Um, he had a double-double. I think he had 20 rebounds. Uh, he, was, he was aggressive and got us in foul trouble. And we kind of got behind the eight ball as far as dealing with him. Um, um, so you know that that one that one kind of, you know, we got that one we lost that one, and then we had the break. Obviously, we had some work over the break, and we really had some some of those moments where you sit down and we talk and ha- kind of have, you know, you know, come to Jesus moment, so to speak, where yes, just guys have to understand that what you think and what you 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 need to understand what your value set is to the team and what you bring to the table, and it may not be what you want or what you thought. Um, about yourself, but we need this from you, and if you can't provide this from in these moments and in this time, then we're going to have to – obviously things aren't going to work out for you. Things aren't going to continue to manifest the way they have. Um, and, and that over the break and over spending some time, you know, individually, just, you know, just kind of getting some – having some conversations with a couple of the guys and, and, and working through some things and helping them understand what we need from them um, and where their value and what their value set is to our team and our program. Um, and just really having those conversations with quite a few of the guys and getting them to understand what they have to do. Some things we call non-negotiables, <coughs> excuse me, um, and just making sure that they understand they have to check those boxes or they don't get opportunities like they like they probably would want to. Um, and obviously we, we came along, and this past weekend we had had a successful game versus got off to a good start, start the second semester, the second season, so to speak, yeah. um, versus Patrick Henry. We owed them one. They beat us by two at the buzzer um, here. Uh, month just about or so ago. four or five weeks ago, yeah. Mm-hmm. So we was able to come in, and uh, I think we we may have led that game probably for probably thirty minutes of the game. We probably we went up by I think thirteen points at one point in time. They chipped away and tied it, and then we kind of extended and took control of the game late and 
finished it off with some free throws, some timely free throws, and some big defensive possessions. Yeah, we don't want to get too far ahead of, uh, but like you said, the you know the new season started off in a big victory formation. Uh, but going back, you know, if we're looking at the roster at the beginning of the year, you have some players returning, mm-hmm. some players left, a lot of freshmen coming in. You know, a lot of kids come in in a way with that same mentality of high school basketball. They're not used to a shot clock until next year whenever North Carolina has a shot clock for high schools. So, you know, a lot of that, you know, that big boy moments. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there hasn't been one game that I've seen with my own two eyes this season that you guys could not, that going in, I was like, they're they're definitely not going to lose. They're definitely not going to win. Every game, it's like, just got to learn and build off of one thing that we didn't do the last game that Correct. we slipped back. Right. And I see that. And like you said, against Patrick Henry, we lost at home here three weeks prior to this week mm-hmm. by, they said, a buzzer beater. And now we go up there and we win by nine, 76 to 67. Mm-hmm. If you look at the schedule moving forward, there's, you know, minus the Sand Hills, which is in our you know, our conference on Wednesday, everybody that we have coming in is teams we've already seen. With the exception of what, Lewisburg. We have Lewisburg, Lewisburg yes. twice. We haven't played them yet, but everyone else we've played once, and this will be the second. And Bryant and Stratton, I'm sorry. So there's two teams that we this will we'll play them twice um, starting after after the break. Um, but, yeah, we do have a pretty good idea of um, who we're facing, what we're looking like. But I think more than that, I think we have an idea of who we are. Um, haven't, ha- haven't had very much. You know, we pretty much bring it back here. We got, still got to overcome some injuries. Um, just received uh, Jalen Burke just came back today. Um, he's been out for what seems like forever. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so he'll, he'll be back, and he has to get himself back into game 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 like mode. And he'll be a big help, obviously being you know you know big fella and you know able to pick up space and help us on the boards more. Um, we we have to work through some things. Or well, another player, uh, Lee, he had a um, procedure um, over the Christmas break, so we're waiting back. He's actually he went for a follow up today, um, and we're we're waiting to hear back what his doctors are going to say about what the timeline is for him. So that will be obviously ho- something we're hoping you know we get good news and we'll be able to add him back into the flow sooner than later. Um, and we feel like we can kind of be whole and for w- finally be able to go out there with all of the all of the all of the all of our weapons, so to speak, um, and be able to come in and, and give us have a, a true visual of what we anticipated looking like from the beginning, um, as we work through some of those issues with injury and other things. Um, I think we now we have a place now where we kind of get over, almost over that hurdle, and can and can really start developing some cohesiveness amongst the group, and we need that. I mean, it's better to be um, better late than to be better early to be gelling later in the season than to be gelling early because there is this is the second season and then you obviously have tournament time and all those things. So um we want to try to find a way to peak um here in the next couple of weeks or so and try to get some 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 level out and know exactly who we are so that we can we can have a second the second part of the season can be better than the first. Yeah, like you said, the peak and it's something that <coughs> a lot of schools, even D one big national schools, one that comes to mind is uh you know, the Tar Heels. Mm-hmm. Last year they went in a tournament at eight seed. Wasn't too hot, won four games in their national championship t- game. Right. And this year they come in number one, and you find out who really Carolina is. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, like you said, you're starting to gel. Players are, you know, this is not like it's something new. Mm-hmm. They've been playing for two, three months now, and, you know, we're getting into the depth of the schedule with 14 games left. And like you said, we have Lewisburg twice, Brian and Stratton twice, and a couple of exhibition games mm-hmm. through the uh, the final two months. But you know what? What have you looking at today at practice tonight, and looking at practice? You know, say after the first full week of practice, what do you see among the players? That's kind of you know, it's it's more like. You know, if we interview a a player, they'll talk about brotherhood. Are they really 
putting that to work or are they how are they how are they getting along as a team there's no i in team obviously mm. you know how how do you see that as a coach just sitting back and watch, watching these young men well i think that it, the, the the weird thing about that is um you know people get comfortable when things are going well so we had to we had to overcome some adversity and overcome being uncomfortable on top of that being a, a pretty much a completely new team like i said it's probably what 13 guys eight nine of them are probably brand new to here and yeah you know uh, junior college basketball and things of that nature so it it's a, it was a learning curve and it was a it was a experience where they had to really dig deep and get a get a have a self reflection because you have a lot of guys that come in and have expectations and they they think one thing and then they realize something different and they have to overcome that they have to work through that and then it can be humbling for some and then others it has to be a period of where they have to dig deep inside themselves and really recognize they need to fight and they got to they got to work hard can't really go through that process of just kind of going through the motions you really got to put in some work and you got to stay after you got to come early you got to lift extra you got to do extra things because the playing field has leveled and that's a a thing that a lot of players have to adjust to not not being the one of the better two or three players on the floor every time they play and having to be having to take on the responsibility of doing something different that they maybe they didn't do before being a, being being able to be a guy that <coughs> understands that he has to prioritize defending prioritize you know diving on loose Diving on the floor for loose balls, prioritizing being a guy that steps in and taking a charge, not the guy that's going to get 15, 18 shots every night. I mean, that's different. Um, some of the guys come from scenarios where they were the the guy or one of yeah. the guys that they were called upon to d- maybe do a lot of heavy lifting offensively, and whereas the defense was a secondary thought. Well, that can't be here because everybody you play, everybody on the court's a threat. So you don't have a weak matchup. You don't have a, I can take this play off because this guy may not be a threat. Everybody can hurt you. So you have to always be on point, always be understanding. These guys have to teach these guys how to understand a scouting report and what, what a scouting report is for and sticking to that and understanding what it means when you have to, you know, short rope a play or you can't go under a screen on this play or you, you have to flathead. There's certain things you have to learn. And when you make the mistake, they capitalize. You pay for it. It's, yeah. not, it's not easy to overcome one or two errors. We call them critical errors. When you make, we have a game, we have four or five critical errors and pivotal moments, we won't probably lose. Yeah. And it's like, well, we played well for, you know, 25 minutes. Well, you're just not good enough. You're going to probably lose. If you can't string together full <laughs> full games. <Yeah. coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, definitely. Uh, like you said, you definitely need to play, you know, come out there and play the whole 40 minutes. Correct. And pretty Correct. much when you get... When, you know, a lot of people look at certain players and be like, oh, he's no threat, he's no threat. You all are equal right now. Mm-hmm. All players are equal on the court. Yeah, some are well-known through the threat, but, you know, you need to defend them just like they're they're shooting to win a basket. Mm-hmm. And a lot of players relax on the defense and don't really get in somebody's face and let them get away with it. But like you said, two or three critical errors – there's eight to ten points. Correct. And then now you're chasing, <clears throat> and then the momentum has switched from your way right to their way. Right. And then you dig it out, and then you got to expend a ton of energy to catch back up. And, and then, then when sometimes you, you don't have enough energy to get across the hurdle, to get across the finish line, because you spend so much energy digging out of a hole. So we have to overcome that and learn how to do that. And we're learning as a team, and we're working on those things and trying to get guys to understand it. Going to be, it's going to be ups and downs, ebbs and flows of basketball, but you got to play through them. Um, other teams are going to make runs as well. Um, we faced those adversities a little bit on Saturday, but we were up, and I think we relaxed a little bit. We got up by 12 or 13, and I think our guys relaxed um, early in the second half. And the, uh, credit to Patrick Henry, they fought back in and, and tied the game back up. So then we had to, you know, buckle back down and finish. Because they hit, they hit, and it was at their place. So you know, they they developed the, you know, gained all the momentum back, and we had to work through that. And able, we were able to this time. We were able to, we were able to fight through and regain control of the game and finish at the free throw line and with some defensive stops, like I said. Okay, coach, uh, we're going to take a quick break and come right back here with the second half of the season right after the break.
Welcome back to the second half of today tonight's coaches show. I'm Petey Doris. If you guys missed the first half, make sure to tune in on JCC's men's basketball YouTube page to get caught up. But second half here, Coach Creasy, uh, second half of the year, like we said, uh, let's touch a little bit on the, uh, you know, a lot of these kids in the first half. Mentally, they're a student. But they're still also an athlete. Mm -hmm. First, they're a student. Second, they're an athlete. Correct. And a lot of reporting going on now with uh, a lot of teams losing students, mm -hmm. losing athletes. Uh, and if you know, like we were saying during the break, if you're if you had the ability to add players, there's one big player that JCC and you guys have added. And uh, just touch base on a little bit about the uh, obviously the student and the athlete. How that progressed for the transition for you in the second half? Well, you know, unfortunately, you know, there's there's a there's a stigma attached to to uh, junior college basketball, um, and you know, you have to work through those things. Unfortunately, you know, sometimes things don't don't work out. You may have some 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 young men or young women of of the sports that um don't 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 work their things out like they're supposed to, and you know, there's attrition. Um, I can recall the first full year I was here, um. We dealt, that was a big blow, just just guys not understanding the dynamic of student athlete um, at the college level. Obviously, in high school, you have a lot of other – you afford a lot of opportunities to, to, to put yourself in position if you're struggling. Obviously, there's a big element of your, your family, your parents being more involved, um, a phone call away, so to speak. Well, we're in college now, so the teachers aren't calling your parents if yeah. you're struggling in class. You know, they're going to email you and communicate with you, and their expectation is that you're a young adult. You can – work through whatever your situations are. Um, try to, you know, put things into perspective for them here at Fort, you know, have, let, the, let the guys know how and what to do as far as tutoring, tutorials, have, have those things available to them. Um, study hall, obviously, is something we mandate. But ultimately, you, you got to take care of your business. You know, you have to make that a priority. Um, and we did a decent job overall this year with that. Obviously, there, there, are, there are some students that were student athletes that have been impacted by that, and they have to work through those issues. Um, one one good thing is we we brought in a um, young man who was here, a transfer here from uh, another school, a four year school that transferred in, um, and we ran we found out some eligibility issues about for him, maybe mid October, and we had to work through those things, and now he's finally got himself in position where he can be a part of the B plan, um, and we have that big big expectations of him to you know be a a pivotal a pivotal part of what we're doing going forward at Jacob. Um, so he got started. He finally got a chance to get on the court and get back going. And I think he's a kid that has a lot of next level potential. So um, we really have expectations for him, and gonna gonna really lean on him to come in and kind of help us. Um, and I think he helped steady us in a number of ways. Um, he's a confident player. He's an experienced player. So he can come in and be a, be a, another piece that we can rely on to uh, contribute for us night in, night out. All right, coach. Uh, now we got one game in our books. We're one and zero in the new season here. Three and ten overall, but we have a big opponent, an in-state opponent, uh, Wednesday, Sandhills. Definitely, definitely. The Flyers. I um, got experience playing with Sandhills. Obviously, we were all in the same conference uh, when I first got here. We, we've since moved up to the Division Two rankings, and they're still one of the most dominant teams in the Division Three rankings. Um, to think they're nationally ranked two one or two um, right now. So they're coming in off of a big win this past weekend. Um, so they have expectations of being being a, a, a team coming in and, and doing well. So we have to be step up to the challenge and be ready to um, you know, we'll stand that they're bringing. I got pretty familiar with them, as I said, been a conference opponent for a while. So I have some familiarity with them. Um, they have some familiar familiarity with me as well. Um, so it'll, it'll be interesting to see how we respond um, to them. And uh, we have them here, so you know, hopefully that'll be, be give us an advantage having them home, having them here at home. Um, but we gotta we gotta work. We gotta prepare. We gotta play. We gotta come out ready to play because you know Sand Hill is always gonna be a tough, a tough opponent. Yeah, uh, like you said, they picked up a big victory this past week against uh, Brunswick, mm -hmm. at Brunswick, coming off of the uh, the uh, holiday break. But then uh, we go on the road for two games, uh, Lewisburg on Saturday, and then Fayetteville Tech. Uh, Fayetteville, we've seen before. Wasn't a, you know, started off well, mm -hmm. kind of slipped in the second half. 
come back, got within a few striking distance and just fell out towards the end. But uh, what are some of the what are the, some of the uh, coaching perspective that you're going to as you're looking at the Fayetteville Tech game? What what's some of the things that you're looking at possibly change? You know to you know better the players. Mm-hmm. You know with with 14 games left, with uh, 11 of those mattering on the standings right. before the tournament at the end of the season. Uh, you know, this is not the first time you've seen Fayetteville. Right. So, you know, we, we, we discussed some things as far as, you know, like I said, like I said in the last time we spoke, um, you don't have a off uh, a day off or a game off here in this, in this region, in this conference. Every game is going to be challenging. So you you can't you can't you know whereas we have experience we played Fairville we we kind of kind of have to push the pause button on on them and, and prepare for the Sam Hills and then Lewis but we got to kind of re- have that one game at a time mindset but we do have some familiarity and we'll look back as we you know we we'll look back and begin our preparation for them in the next few days uh, if I remember correctly I think we struggled at the free throw line and I think that cost us and I think that we. I don't know if we got into any foul trouble, but I think it we I think we didn't play well. We didn't shoot the ball well from the free throw line. I think we may have struggled from the three end as well. Um, so we just gotta make sure we're 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 sharpening up sharpening our tools and being prepared and have an understanding of what, what they're trying to do. Um they've gotten healthy. Um I think they had uh, I know they brought back um uh, one of the players came back the game they played us, they've been off been out injured. So I think they're pretty much at full strength right now and they've been playing well. So we'll have to be prepared for them. And um, obviously Lewisburg, even before them, they were about a formidable opponent. Um, got some familiarity with them, have seen them a little bit on film and got to go there. They're always going to play hard. They have a, a very good environment. You know, Lew- Lewisburg, you know, they're one of the only schools that have, you know, the, the, the experience on campus. Um, and they have, you know, obviously with the big program, the, the campus living and all those things. So it's, it's usually a, that environment will give you a true feel of what it looks like at the, at once you go four four years with the you know the fans you, you usually get a big crowd there for a home game, um so we're excited about that <coughs> as well. Um, but again, this region, this division, every game is going to be a it's going to be a dog fight every night. Okay, coach, uh, that's going to do it for the, tonight's coaches show. Uh, just a little recap touched on the end of the uh, physical year last year with two losses, Wake Tech and. Uh, and Southwest Virginia then started a year off on a good, strong note. Uh, adding Jacob, uh, obviously, is going to help the offense and the team morale uh, moving forward. But just want to uh, thank you for stopping in tonight and uh, look forward to uh, another coach's show in about a week or so, week and a half. And uh, got a couple big games ahead. If uh, you guys want to come out and watch the guys play, we're right here at the Richard B. Harrison Gymnasium in Selma. Uh, the game on Wednesday is at seven o'clock, and then Saturday is just right up the street at Lewisburg, tipping off at three o'clock. We'll have the game right on JCC's website, uh, YouTube channel on Wednesday, but Sunday, uh, Saturday's game will be on Lewisburg's YouTube, and you can check out Coach Creasy on the sidelines. <laughs> he's not trying to be like no Bobby Knight throwing no chairs, but he's he's one heck of a coach in the Region Ten, uh, Division Two JUCO. Thank you guys for stopping in tonight. We look forward to seeing you next time on JCC's Coaches Show. Good night.